What's up, homies? Welcome to another episode of Heroes Reforged Reads a Comic Book. I'm Hector, that's Augustine. Adam could not join us today because he is busy on doing mission. Some work stuff. He's on mission. <laughs> on Mars. He's on Mars. Uh, he's trying to fight the sequins. Now nah, that's another <laughs> that's another comic. But today we've got an incredibly special episode for you today. Augustine and I are going to be talking about an amazing comic book. We're looking at the vision. The Complete Collection, 12-issue series by writer Tom King and artist Gabriel Hernandez-Walta. And I want to give a little bit more credit to some of the rest of the amazing creative team. We have another artist on issue number seven, Michael Walsh, which was the sort of relationship issue. Augustine knows what I'm talking Mm -hmm. about. It's a great issue. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. As well as Jordi Belair doing the colors, color artist. Amazing job from Mm -hmm. Jordi. VC's Clayton Cowles did uh, the lettering. Some wonderful covers from Marco DeFanzo and Mike Del Mundo. Just an overall pretty spectacular Marvel comic book. So I want to start talking about this with this is why we decided to pick it. We got the WandaVision show coming out. This particular 12 Issues is an Eisner Award winning comic book. It has had an incredible reputation in the comics, in the superhero community. Uh, Writer Tom King went on to do Batman after this and has since done Heroes in Crisis and uh, as well as Mr. Miracle, which was a phenomenal series as well. There's a lot of similarities there over for DC. But the Vision may or may not have some stuff that we're going to see in the WandaVision show. I read this comic book a long time ago. I got to reread it. I have a copy. Augustine, you read it for the first time. Overall thoughts, brother. Reading The Vision, what'd you think? Okay, so overall thoughts. At first, I thought this was going to be a comic that I was that it was too dense for me to really bite into because it starts off not like every other comic. It starts off kind of Stepford Wivesy, and and I kind of thought I knew where it was going, and I was just like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Like I had all these preconceived notions in my head. And then suddenly it started hitting some themes that I was very familiar with and that might be, you know, pretty pertinent in these day in this day and age. Um, and before I knew it, I was just like sailing through the book. I was like, oh, my God, this is so good. And one of the things that really got me, um, it's a, it's not, well, I guess it's kind of a minor thing, but not really a minor thing, is the incredible cover art for each one of the issues. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. It's just like there's a touch of of like niceness, but a touch of creepiness, but a touch of like ominousness. And it's just, there's so much stuff being conveyed on one page that all just kind of ties into everything else. And overall thoughts though, I thought that this, this comic book really made me love and think more about the vision and what that character represents as more than just a a synthesoid android. Yep. Where, you know, he might be analogs and representations for people of color and and interracial relationships and all kinds of crazy stuff that we can yep. talk about. But yep. blown away. I, blown I'm, away. I am that makes me so happy, dude, because I've always loved this character and I've also had a soft spot for like Martian Manhunter mm-hmm. on the Justice League. Similar roles. These are two very dudes similar. that are like these very alien characters. They feel like outsiders. Once they're welcomed into the leagues or the Avengers, they're like overwhelmed with emotion and it's very important for them to be one of these uh, uh, superhero team members. But the Vision has had this really crazy, interesting like storyline from when he was created by Ultron, who was created by Hank Pym, Ant-Man. So there's this weird grandfatherly, you know, and his family yeah. tree is insane because as soon as he got with Wanda, Scarlet Witch, that brings in Quicksilver, Magneto. There's a whole, I mean, look at that. The Ultron look family that. tree. That is the Ultron family the tree. The Ultron which family nuts. tree. Yeah. I love that this book also included Victor Mancha mm-hmm. from The Runaways. Oh, yes, of course. There's a Latino in here, which is there's great. There's a Latino. <laughs> he's, a, he's kind of a piece of shit, but there's a Latino. You know, in this. Mira, mijo, portate Mira. bien. That's what oh. I want to tell him. Portate bien, güey. Sabes que? Pau, 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 pues pau, que sabes que, Victor, Victor. Pau, pau. It's, uh, <laughs> but he's a really cool character because I first yeah. met that yeah. character in the Runaways comic. Mm-hmm. And they mm-hmm. introduced in that book that he was sort of created by Ultron. So he's sort of another child right. of Ultron, right. which I think is really interesting. I love that this book embraced the, the idea that the brainwaves of the vision were based on a character named Simon Williams, mm-hmm. Wonder Man. Mm-hmm. And then Wonder Man has an evil brother who is the Grim Reaper. So it's this weird, you know, superhero family tree. And then on top of all of that, 
Vision and Wanda had at one point kids, kind mm-hmm. of, and now they're young Avengers. They're not runaways, but now they're young Avengers. It's Wiccan and Speed, and and then on top, on top, on top of all of that, Vision creates a family for this right. book, and these characters are fascinating. It's insane. And in the back of the book, Tom King talks about some of the stuff he was trying to do and how he was wanted to use these characters to talk about some of these themes, like you mentioned. And he says, the Vision is the Spock of the Marvel Universe. And I went, oh my God. He is. A, what key. a perfect draw for you. Key. What a per- oh, absolutely. But it's also <laughs> like, even if you're not a Trekkie, I think everybody knows about Spock yeah, from Star yeah. Trek and the, the and the way that that character is used in pop culture because he's he's also a stand-in for people of color, or LGBTQ people, like this this idea of an outsider or he belongs to both worlds. He's almost like right. um, somebody of mixed race or he's even somebody like the child of an immigrant. There's so much that you can do with that Bingo. universal story. Mm -hmm. And for Tom King to attempt to put Vision at the sort of forefront of things happening in Marvel Mm -hmm. and give him this really great side story of like, well, he's going to be the liaison to the White House Mm -hmm. in Mm -hmm. Washington, D.C., and he's going to want a job, but he's not going to ask for it flat out. Right, right, right. And and meanwhile, because he knows he can never really truly belong to the world of humans, he's tried it before and it didn't go great. It ended with him erasing his emotions, yeah. which is such a great metaphor for like an absentee father. How messed up is that? <laughs> right? Where he's And also like toxic male masculinity. Like oh. just don't talk about your emotions. That's yeah. also a trait. Absolutely. It's insane. Like all the things that are touched on here yeah. are, are so subtle, but also so, so piercing at the same time. Uh, one thing, and I was doing, trying to do a little bit of research on this comic book because it is so dense. It's such a good read. Um, I didn't know that the comic, the the version of Stan, the version that Stanley created back in the day in the '60s, mm-hmm. was also an analog and a representation of interracial couples, mm. because it came out in the '60s. Interracial couples were still a thing. It was a white woman with a literally a man of color. You know, oh, like it was. Yeah, it was a, supposed a red to be synthesoid, but yes, yeah. a red synthesoid. He was a man. He, they called it a quote unquote man of color. It was around the same time where like Black Panther was still like the representation of an African American in comic books, mm-hmm. and like you know Power Man and things like that were going on. So it's really interesting to have him bring in those dynamics into all of this and have it all play out and feel like it was written yesterday. <laughs> no know? kidding. Like, it felt no like kidding. it was really cutting. There was smartphones in it, and they were used accurately. Yeah, um, and, <laughs> right. Because like, if you if you like read a comic and they're still using flip phones or like old Nokia's mm-hmm. or whatever, you're just like, mm-hmm. okay, cool, that's super dated. Mm-hmm. But now, like, there's there's just imagery in here that is super cutting. Uh, there's yeah. there's these kids who are who call um, in 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 the synthesoid families, the visions families. Uh, efforts to be normal, these kids go and like graffiti their walls and call yeah. them socket lovers, which I mean, yeah. it, it shouldn't sound bad, but when you say it that way, it's like, dude, that sounds so derogatory. It, it, I think that this book, <laughs> with the language, with the themes, with the violence, pushes everything right to the line where you can do that in a Marvel Comics yeah. comic yeah. book. And it's mm-hmm. still not like rated M for mature. It's still mm-hmm. not an else world. It's still not a what if. Like it is set in the Marvel universe. Yeah. It takes place before the event Civil War yeah. II. You know, it's after Iron Man, Tony Stark got that cool new armor. It's after yeah. Jane Foster is Thor. She, mm-hmm. you know, she's there. Sam Jane Wilson Foster, is Captain America. Yeah, they're on the same team. They're like hanging out. I like that they kind of drill it by their address being 616. Yep. Did you notice that one? That was I, a good, that, that's a good that. touch. I love that. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about some of our favorite sort of moments because yeah. there is so much to cover yeah. in the book. I have to talk about the first issue as a whole because you touched on it a little bit, Augustine, where you were like, I'm getting into it. The first issue does not start like a normal comic book. Mm-hmm. You know, it, 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 it is a little bit jarring because you're like, I don't know what to expect. Where are, right. the, where are they going with these characters in this story? And then they get attacked by the Grim Reaper, which is par for the course for comic book stuff. But he <laughs> so stabs good. not the wife, Virginia. The uh, daughter Viv. Not Vin, but Viv. Yeah. Stabs her through her body. And because she is a robot character and it's the first issue, I'm reading this. And if, I remember the first time being like, okay, well, they're going to be able to like save her. She's a robot. But what I did not see coming is that Virginia murders this man. Kills Straight him. Straight up. Kills and him. And then lies about it. 
And that's when I was like, this book is awesome. It's insane. <laughs> Stepford yep. Wives. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, it, 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 those kinds of feelings, it's so evocative of that, of, I, of one horror of my, in, in suburbia. You know? One of my favorite moments in that scene where Vision is asking Vivian, is, what, is that her name? Viv, Viv is the daughter. Viv is the daughter. Vir Virginia is Virginia the mother. Virginia is the mother, where he's asking, Vir or where he's asking Virginia to play back the events to her yeah. or to him, and she's completely lying. And then when she says, oh, he tried to cut me, but I, but I phased through it, and he goes, oh, it buzzes. And she's yep. like, huh? Yep. <laughs> and Vision's his like, his blade, notice? it buzzes. And she was like, yes, it buzzes. And it's those little touches of like intrigue and just like, oh, is she going to get caught? Like, what's going on? Is she really, is she a robot that's really lying right now? Is she mm -hmm. lying to protect herself to try to be normal? Is this mm -hmm. something that happens? And it all makes you like start thinking about like, is this part of their path to them trying to be normal? But then at the end of the day, like it just digs her into this huge mess of a hole she that gets she sent a phone. Somebody <sighs> recorded it. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, oh, my God, like it's worst case scenario, worst case scenario. And in the first issue, also to go back to that for a second, when we're introduced to their across the street neighbors, mm -hmm. the oh, narration yeah. who later we learn the narrator is Scarlet Witch or mm -hmm. Agatha Harkness, yes. depending on what the issue is, that the the narrator tells you. The, they will die in a fire caused mm -hmm. by one of the visions. And mm -hmm. you're like, what? That yes, can't happen. Exactly. <laughs> and then it effing happens, dude. <laughs> yep. And it's and it's heartbreaking, but it's something that when it happens, it's not like, oh, it could have been avoided. It's it's just tragic. And you go, It's a matter of fact. It's a matter of fact. Yeah. And the fact that his final thoughts are about his wife and her final thoughts are about that vase of about Zen La mm -hmm, or whatever. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. that she was thinking about that. Yeah. I mean, there's this amazing image here where clearly yes. Yes. these creators are trying to talk about something right. that's happening in the United States and in the yes. world, and, and, and it's amazing. I mean, they even address it. They even yeah. address it when he looks at the logo. He's like, no, we're a bulldog now with a trifold hat. Yeah, yeah. And then Brilliant. he goes, J just like humans, they change, but not really. Mm -hmm. Like, they change, but they don't commit or something. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't do it fully. And I'm mm -hmm. like, damn. It's calling us out, I mean, homie. Ugh. We've got the way that the police are depicted in this story is very interesting. Mm -hmm. The way that um, Viv is depicted with having a crush on that kid, and then that kid ends up getting killed. I mean, <sighs> there's moments of this it's book, heavy, Augustine, man. that I... That's what you texted me after you read it. You're like, this yeah. is a heavy read. And it's I was heavy. like, yup. Very it's heavy. not light. And so many, I mean, the guy cuts open, Vision cuts open a dog's brain and then makes a robot dog. And, and you're like, what dog. the? <laughs> it's so messed up. It's very messed up. Yeah. The, I, I another agree. highlight issue is the issue where they flash back to Scarlet Witch and Vision's relationship. That's my favorite. I mean, I, the whole comic is great. And don't get me wrong, like yeah. what they did yeah. with Vision was great. Yeah. But going back, I really felt the way it was drawn kind of felt like almost. You know, like when you think back at some of your favorite shows and there's almost like this nostalgic haziness to it where like it's Wonder you, Years you, or something. Yeah, the Wonder. that's exactly what I was about to say, the Wonder Years. You kind of feel like it's that kind of vibe. They really put that kind of vibe out. And I really felt that connection between Wanda and Vision because we did get to see it in the movies a little bit. And I'm not an avid Vision or Wanda reader, so I'm not right. hugely exposed to their relationship. But even within these few panels where he was trying to tell her a joke... Like, you know, yeah. that, <laughs> he was just trying to be funny. He was just trying to fit in because we've all been in that situation. And Wanda loved the joke. Oh, she loved but it. But Virginia it does not understand it. And you're Vir like, dude, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. messed up. That's it, so sad. It, yeah, because he had that, <laughs> tried to replicate it with the new crystal that was given by Wanda and it's not there. Yeah, it's it's heartbreaking, really. Um, I, I love that they drew him smiling. Like when they surprised him, what was that surprise for his birthday or something like that, where they were all eating and he was just like beaming happy and just, he was actually smiling. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and I felt that. To be a part and, of a family. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. And, and so, and also they're like making out behind a tree while the Avengers are like beating, mm -hmm. you know, some big monster or whatever. It's Tomorrow stuff like may that. never come. Tomorrow may never come. That Ooh. was cutting. That was cutting to me because <laughs> at that point. Uh, I forgot what was going on in the news. It, it, yeah. it feels like every, every day the world's falling apart. But 
reading that, I was like, no, don't tell me that right now. I can't, <laughs> I can't read this right now. That's too depressing. Yeah. Uh, but then the way they kind of tie that into everything else, one is like, no, 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 no. Tomorrow always comes. Uh. And that made me feel better. Um, but there was just so much stuff that hit very close to home in these trying times with this book. And, and I, just the fact that it was even put out in a comic book uh, really speaks yeah. to the power that comic books can have. Because I feel like we put out comic book stuff and we tell people to read it, but people don't really pay attention to it unless you've been a comic book reader for a long time. Mm -hmm. I feel like this comic book does a good job of like, if you've seen the vision once, you can read this book. And, and, and kind of understand because it leads you on such a good way. But there's also some stuff which is a little bit more difficult to understand, like the flowers, yeah. the, the tree that was given to them. And like the vase explains itself at the end. Uh, but also there's like, you know, some heavy lore stuff like vibranium and there's like mm -hmm. the caps lighter and then all these things that happen in the comic book. So there there's one thing that I'm still baffled by because I hated this in high school, but... The Shakespearean quotes that Vin was reading. Yeah, that he gets I, into. I just, I couldn't wrap my head around that just because for me, Shakespeare is just something that I can't wrap my head around for some for reason. Sure. For sure. I don't, I don't know if you understood it, Hector. I don't know if it's something that should be understood. I think, I think like a lot of things in this book, like you're talking about all the deep lore and whether or not like a new reader would be able to know all that stuff. First of all, I or think that- Or bite onto it at least. For sure, to enjoy yeah. it. Right. I think that the book does a, great job of actually explaining some of the key stuff i also love the running theme of i've saved the world 37 times oh. and the fact that they actually count it out because i'm like dude i could go to my encyclopedia i'm pretty sure they got it right it's i'm pretty all accurate. sure <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's accurate maybe was, they added you know a couple extra ultrons or whatever yeah, i'm like i was no. shocked at the amount of times ultron came back <laughs> He just keeps coming back. He just the keeps dude coming keeps back. Son coming of a back. Bitch. But like Son all those ridiculous characters, the Space mm -hmm. Phantom and mm -hmm. all these, you know, in insane yeah. named characters. I'm like, yeah, those are all Marvel Comics characters. Mm -hmm. Whether or not that's actually the chronology of Vision interacting with those characters, it's not that important. But I think that stuff works on sort of multiple levels because if you're a huge Marvel Comics deep lore fan, you're going to chew on that stuff. If you're somebody yeah. who isn't familiar, I think that a key important stuff is explained. And maybe it's an entry point. If you're a Shakespeare nerd, and I do know people that really understand Shakespeare, they're super into it, I'm sure, I'm positive, I'm positive, everything that Vin was saying and reciting mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is thematically important to the material. Mm -hmm. But if you're not, there's also just the level of the idea of a android getting into Shakespeare is mm -hmm, already mm -hmm. a great idea as it is. Right, it's right. already like, it's already important to the story because it's like, it's about Vin, how he feels like an outsider. The fact that he connected to this work, the fact that he's able to find some thematic stuff and then he wanted to show it to his dad and his mm -hmm. dad was busy and then Vin mm -hmm. died mm -hmm. because Victor accidentally killed him. Yeah. And then Vision kept replaying that and it's like heartbreaking. And I, the other thing that I loved about this book is that you introduce these characters, these family members. By the end of it, we're down two because Vin is killed and unable to be saved. And then Vision decides he's going to go kill the guy who did it. He's going to go kill his brother, mm -hmm. Victor Mancha. And he, as a man, has made this choice because his son died. As a father. As a father. Yeah. And as yeah. a father, in this, as a character in this book, I was like, can't stop him. Uh, you better get out of his way. I totally understand that. And this and is so sad. I, I, I like I like that we have only... It's taken us this long to talk about how the Vision single-handedly takes down the Avengers. Love it. Because it's, because it's true. I think him and Wanda are some of the most powerful Ugh. Marvel Comics characters that rarely get to flex. Do you know what I mean? Both yeah. of those characters are all about sort of reserving their power. And I think that's another great reason that they really kind of connect. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the book, his wife, Virginia, understands what her husband's going to do, what Vision's going to do. And I, I forget, maybe it was because Wanda took the thing or Agatha Harkness took the, the leaf, but like they also knew what Vision was going to do, mm -hmm. this potential future. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to stop it. He wipes out the Avengers, almost... De like defeats them but doesn't kill them or whatever yeah yeah and before he can get there virginia shows up and she kills victor mm -hmm. because she does it and then she goes home and uploads her confession and everything is all on her vision didn't do anything and then she drinks the water from the vase or whatever that will poison her and she does not let it face do and she kills herself 
And it is so sad that I could be reading this and I could choke up when yeah. I get to that point because yeah. the writing is great. The final moments between Vision and his wife where she's explaining why she did it and he's they're talking to one another. And then it's all after the fact. Wanda is telling this to their daughter, uh, Viv. Mm -hmm. And she, as a daughter, has to understand that her parents aren't real humans, but they still did this and this is why. And she's telling her, I'm telling you this, Viv, because I hope that you can, despite everything, still love your mother for what she did. And you're like, oh my God. Right, exactly. And then they're exactly. able to bring the dog back because it's cute, you know, and Tony Stark helped. And mm -hmm. at the end of the story, Vision tells his daughter, I haven't been a good father, but I want to be. And guess what? Viv ends up on the new superhero teenager team, the champions. She's in the Marvel Universe. Like she becomes a part of the ongoing story, which is awesome. It's so beautiful. it's beautiful. It's this thing hits like uh it's 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 an amazing ton of bricks, man. It, it's an amazing story of of marginalized people. It's an it's it could be an immigrant story, it could be a person of color, it could Great be a metaphor. person Great. With, and any kind of marginalized or looked down upon person in society. Uh, it's just so brilliantly written. I feel like I need to read it like four or five more times to kind of catch all the little things that Tom King was putting down. You, you'll get stuff yeah. out of it. And yeah. this is one of the reasons, along with things like House of M and Wanda's connection to Magneto, that I was so elated, Augustine, when they announced the, the, the TV show. Because mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. Vision and Scarlet Witch in the movies up to this point. But Vision was killed by Thanos. And what a great ending to that story. But I was like, ah, we'll never get to do like this cool, weird stuff. Well, guess what? We may get to do some of this stuff. How I are we going to do that? Oh, my God. I'm so excited to see how that's going to happen. It's going to yeah. be good, dude. It's going to be really, really good. And knowing Feige and the team, like I have full trust that they know how to blend this with everything else because there's there's years of vision and wanda history that we haven't read yet it's Correct. it exists but i don't Correct. know about it mm -hmm. so they're gonna be bringing in so much cool stuff i just hope we got enough in this to yeah. kind of give us like a little leg up to see like I, I know what that's all about i think we're gonna see, see some references and i think the main thing is like the vibe that we got while reading this, the vibe, yeah, yeah. I think mm -hmm. is something that they can achieve in this upcoming TV show. I think you're right. I, and I, I already feel like I felt it, honestly, because of the whole... And the trailers and stuff? Sitcom-y weirdness, Stepford Wives, creepy, ominous. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like we're, yeah, exactly. We're just mm -hmm. like, something's not right about mm -hmm. this suburban life. Mm -hmm. That's what this comic book is. That's what so this is. So just another reminder, in case people watching right now are not aware, we are doing a reaction series to the WandaVision show. Uh, first episode comes out January 15th, so we'll have our episode out shortly after that. And we'll have, as per usual, full reactions, full unedited Uncut. on our Patreon. So you can check out the links below to see all of the stuff that we're offering for our Patreon. If you wanted to join and support us, we'd really appreciate it. This video was awesome. Augustine, I'm so glad. I'm so stoked you read this comic book. The last thing we got to do at some point is we're going to have to ask Adam what the hell he thought when he read oh, it, yeah. man, because it's... Yeah, definitely. You know what would be interesting is having Adam read this while the show is going mm. on and seeing if he likes that, but we'll see mm. how he feels about we'll that. We'll see how he yeah. feels. So if you guys like this video, let us know so that we can make more videos like this. Is there other comics that you want us to read, Marvel or DC related to upcoming shows, movies, whatever? Uh, be sure to like the video, subscribe, tell your friends, check out our Patreon, join our Discord. A lot of great conversations in the Discord. Mm -hmm. I'm always dropping a bunch of exclusive trading cards <laughs> that I like to make. <laughs> so you can check those out there. Uh, you can just click them, download them. There you go. Yeah. So from all of us to all of you, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.